Hello, welcome to High Ground Gaming. This is Eric, and we're going to play another game from our all-time ELO Greatest Teams Tournament using digital um, diamond baseball. And uh, tonight's game is going to be between the 1970 Baltimore Orioles and the 1979 Pittsburgh Pirates. I know uh, Beatles Eternally is a big Pittsburgh fan, and uh, Stratomatic Delaware, I remember seeing a, a 1979 Pittsburgh uh, World Series replay on there. So this is for you guys and anyone else that likes the Pirates. Um, any Orioles fans out there too? So anyway, um, so I was putting together the teams here, and I'll be playing the 1979 Pittsburgh, which is the home team. So there will be no, um, this is before the DH anyway, um, for, ba for Baltimore anyway. So even if Baltimore was the home team, there wouldn't be a DH used. But anyway, uh, so no DH in this game. But when I was putting together the, uh, the Pittsburgh lineup, I noticed there were two, well, especially one, but possibly two glaring, uh, omissions on the, uh, on the Pittsburgh roster, which I was kind of disappointed about. So let's just go to their roster real quick. Um, all right, so let's just, you can just go to the field right here. So behind, uh, I picked Jim Baby to be the pitcher. And you'll notice that shortstop, Tim Foley was not available at shortstop. And he played a significant number of games. I know he, he, um, played part of the season with another team. But also, too, um, he is not even available on their roster. And he had, he, he, on, if you look at baseball reference, he was their main shortstop through 133 games. Um, he had 578, 87 plate appearances, 525 at bats, um, 291 batting average with a homer and 65 runs batted in. So definitely some significant stats there. Instead, all you have a choice of is Dale Barra, who had uh, only played in 44 games, and who was the other guy? Um, oh, oh, Frank Tavares, who only played in 11 games. So, and, and Tavares actually was played more on another team too. So it's really strange why they omitted him fully. And, but the bigger, even more glaring, um, omission was Bill Madlock was not available at third base. So I had to play around with the infield there as, you know, two prominent parts of the infield, um, were not available for Pittsburgh. So I thought that was kind of disappointing on, uh, Diamond Mine Baseball. I'm not sure exactly why. Um, those, those guys were admitted, omitted. Um, yeah, cause Bill, cause Bill Madlock, granted he only played in 85 games, but that's over half the season. Um, he had 353 plate appearances, 311 at bats, and hit 328 with seven homers and 44 runs batted in, and also stole 21 bases. So that's a pretty significant, um, omission there, those two guys. So I'm not sure exactly what, what the thinking was behind that. Um, but anyway, yeah, they're not available. So I had to like makeshift it here a little bit on, in the infield. But Phil Gardner is capable. Um, but Bear and Stennett at second and shortstop were definitely not, not my first choices there. Um, but unfortunately, you know, two of the guys were not available. As Phil Gardner was a regular, um, I think played more games at second base. I had him at second base originally in my original lineup, but then I noticed Matlock and Foley weren't there, so I had to had to make some uh, provisions for that. So we'll see how that plays out. But anyway, um, so Jim Bibby, as you said, is on the mound. He had a twelve and four record in nineteen seventy nine, and both Pittsburgh and Baltimore were world champions in those in their respective years. So Jim Bibby, 12 and 4, 2.81 ERA, um, 137 and two-thirds innings pitched, only 110 hits allowed, nine homers, 47 walks, and 103 strikeouts. Left-handed batters hit 228 against them, and right-handed batters 211. So the lineup for the visiting Baltimore Orioles is going to be Don Buford, the left fielder. Paul Blair is at center, bat second. Frank Robinson, the right field, the bats third. Boog Powell, the first baseman, bats cleanup, and he was the um, MVP of 1970. Let me just double check on that, but I'm pretty sure he was. 
Let's see here. Oh, I don't have it here, but uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure he was the uh, the. Oh, I'm sorry, actually, let me go back to the actual year. To the, the main screen here. Yeah, Boog Powell was the uh, AL MVP in 1979. I mean, 1970. And in 1979, Willie Stargell um, shared MVP honors with Keith Hernandez. Um, so we have two MVP um, winners, too, on these rosters. So let's see here. So anyway, so batting fifth is Bill Robinson, the third baseman. Batting sixth is um and actually Bill Robinson is also on the Pittsburgh team. So Bill Robinson sorry, this is Brooks Robinson. What am I thinking of here? There we go. Bill Robinson was up there. So, um, Brooks Robinson, sir. <laughs> Getting all my Robinsons mixed up. Anyway, Brooks Robinson is the third baseman for Baltimore. I'm still thinking of the uh Pittsburgh line. I'm sorry about that. Um, Dave Johnson, Davey Johnson, the second baseman, bat sixth. But behind the plate is Elrod Hendricks, batting seventh. Mark Belanger, the shortstop, bats eighth. And Dave McNally is on the mound, batting ninth. So that's the lineup for the Baltimore Orioles. So for the Pittsburgh Pirates, behind Bibby is going to be Bill Robinson in left field, Omar Marino in center, and Dave Parker in right. In the infield is... Like I said, it's a makeshift infield there, other than Stargell. It's going to be Garner at third, Barra at short, Stennett at second, and Stargell at first. And behind the plate is Steve Nikosha. Get Steve in it. Yeah, Steve Nikosia. So that's your that's your defense for the Pittsburgh Pirates. So, all right, so Don Buford steps into the box. He's hit 272 with 17 homers and 66 runs batted in in 1970. Baby looks in for the sign for Nikosha. Here's the windup in the pitch. And it's going to be a breaking ball in there for strike one. Oh, actually, I don't know why we're in pitcher mode. Should be in batting mode. All right, so 0-2 count now. Bibby comes to the plate. Strike three. So Buford strikes out for the first out of the game. So that'll bring up Don Buford. Don Buford hit 267 with 18 homers and 65 runs batted in in 1970. Routine ground in a second. Taken up by Stennett. Throws to first and Blair is out. So two up and two down. Brings up Frank Robinson. Frank Robinson hit 306 with 25 homers and 78 runs batted in. Here's the pitch by Bibby. And it's going to be whacked to the left field corner. If It's a fair ball and a home run. So Frank Robinson hits a home run to give the Baltimore Orioles a one nothing lead. So Bibby thought he was going to have some for one two three inning. And Frank Robinson had no part of that one. I know Mr. Brody, huh? You hit that one way out of here. Mr. Brody was bugging me earlier when I was having an issue getting the camera going. Um, but we we messed up on one of our settings, so Mr. Brody was getting getting on me for that. But he's back there now. So anyway, Boog Powell, the MVP for the American League in 1970. Hit 297 with 35 homers and 114 runs batted and also drew 104 walks and struck out 80 times. So can they go back to back here? Definitely a possibility. 3-2 count. Bibby pitches to Powell and he gets him. So he strikes him out. But Frank Robinson puts the Orioles on the board with a solo home run. So that'll bring up the Pittsburgh Pirates. Omar Marino, the center fielder, bats first. Phil Gardner, the third baseman, will bat second. Dave Parker, the right fielder, third. Batting cleanup is the left fielder, Bill Robinson. 
Willie Pop Stargell is the first baseman who batting fifth. Nakosha behind the plate bats sixth. Sten at the second baseman bats seventh. Dale Barra, son of Yogi Barra, a shortstop, bats eighth. And Jim Bibby on the mound bats ninth. So Omar Marino, a stolen base threat, had... Oh, it doesn't show how many stolen bases he had right here, but here he had set, he had 77 stolen bases and was caught stealing 21 times. So Dave McNally on the hill for the Orioles with a one nothing lead now. It was 24-9 with a 3.22 ERA. Pretty sure he won Cy Young Award. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure he would have voted that record. Um, could be wrong on that one, though. Anyway, uh, 296 innings pitched, two, only 277 hits allowed, 29 home runs surrendered, 78 walks, and 185 strikeouts. And Mr. Brody just reminded me that Dave McNally did not win the Cy Young Award. In fact, he never won the Cy Young Award. Um, he did not win the Cy Young Award in 1970. In fact, it was Jim Perry of the Minnesota Twins who won it. And he had Jim Perry had 55 votes, vote points, and McNally had 47. Sam McDonnell, McDowell from Cleveland finished third, and teammate Mike Cuellar, who also had 24 wins, finished fourth with 44 points. Actually, Jim Palmer was also on that list with 11 points. So they had three Orioles in the top five for Cy Young Award voting, but none of them won. Jim Perry won. So thank you, Mr. Brody, for straightening that out. Mr. Brody knows his stuff there. That's why he's managing the 1977 Red Sox using out-of-the-park baseball. So, all right. So Omar Marino steps to the plate, hit 282 with eight homers and 69 runs batted in. So now he looks for the sign from Hendricks. Here's the windup in the pitch. One two pitch, and McNally has him way out in front as he struck out. It. Marino struck out 104 times in the 1979 season. So Phil Gardner up now. Gardner hit 293 with 11 homers and 59 runs batted in. Hit 273 against lefties. One one count. McNally deals and struck well at the deep right field. Robinson's back. He's there. And the ball sets a slice away. He has it. So two outs in the Pittsburgh first. Brings up Dave Parker. Dave Parker hit 310 with 25 homers and 94 runs batted in. Hit 317 versus righties. Here's the pitch by McNally. 1-2 delivery. Strike three called. So the Pirates go down in order. And after one, it's Baltimore one and Pittsburgh nothing. So Bibby back on the hill. He'll face Robinson, Johnson, and Hendricks. Brooks hit 276 with 18 homers and 94 runs batted in. Here's the pitch by Bibby. 2 2 offering. Lines won the center. And Marino will take it for out number one. So one down for Dave Johnson. Or Davey Johnson. Hit 281 with 10 homers and 53 runs batted in. 2-1 pitch. Skimmer to the left of Barra. Sweeps it sidearm to first in time. So two quick outs in the Baltimore second. Brings up Elrod Hendricks or Ellie Hendricks. 242 hitter with 12 homers and 41 runs batted in. Strike two pitch coming. Line shot right side. Dive by Stargell. But it goes through for a single. As Stargell has poor range, especially at his advanced age. 
So a two-out single will bring up the shortstop Mark Belanger. Belanger hit just 218 with the homer and 36 runs batted in. Excellent glove, though, from Pittsfield, Mass. Belanger has a strike on him. Bibby fires. Belanger hits a fly ball, and it's going to go foul and out of play. So 0-2 count now. 2-2 count. Bibby kicks and fires. Pop fly outside third. Gardner has room. And he has it for out number three. So Pittsburgh trailing 1 0 will come to bat. It's going to be Robinson, Stargell, and Nakosha. Robinson hit 264 with 24 homers and 75 runs batted in. Hit 311 versus lefties. 1-2 pitch. It's a bouncer. Through the right side for a base hit. Or on the inside out swing. So the Pirates have leadoff runner on. That brings up Pops with Stargell. Stargell hit 281 with 32 homers and 82 runs batted in. Sharing the co-MVP honors, as you said, with Keith Hernandez. He hit 293 versus right, uh, 254 versus left handed pitching. 0 2 pitch on the hands and popped up. Waiting for it to come down is Johnson and he'll take it in for out number one as Robinson stays at first. Nikosha up now hit 288 with four homers and 13 runs batted in. Robinson being held at first. 2-1 pitch. Poked out to center. And Blair scarcely has, scarcely has the move as he makes a catch for out number two. So Rennie Stennett up now. Hit just 238 with no homers and 24 runs batted. As you can see, pretty weak hitting um, second baseman here. And when you see Dale, Dale Barra next, it'll be just as, as weak. <laughs> So definitely not the best Pittsburgh lineup. Definitely not as strong as their regular lineup during the 1979 season. Quick throw to first by McNally. Robinson's back standing up. one zero pitch. Pop up the short right field. Robinson's in position. And he has it for out number two. Out oh, number three, sorry. So after two full, it's Baltimore one and Pittsburgh nothing. McNally will lead it off. McNally, a 133 hitter with a homer and six runs batted in. Delivery by Bibby. 2-2 two -two count. Bibby kicks and delivers. And Bibby gets the strikeout. So top of the order, Buford. He's 0 for 1 on the day. Two balls and no strikes. Here's the pitch. Grounded over the bag at first, and it hits the bag. Way up in the air, and finally comes down. Sargell is there waiting for it. Steps on the bag for the out. So two down in the Baltimore third. Paul Blair up now 0 for 1. Grounded out, sent it to Sargell his first time up. 1-1 pitch. Baby delivers. Curve ball popped in the infield. Stargell singles for it. And he'll take it to retire the side. So after two and a half, it's still Baltimore 1 and Pittsburgh nothing. And here's Dale Bearer. Like I said, even worse than Randy Stennett. two eleven on the season. In 123 at-bats with three homers. Does have a little bit of pop, though. With three homers and 15 runs batted in. Pretty even. Hit 211 versus righties and 212 versus lefties. 1 2 on Barra. Here's the delivery. Lined off the pitcher, but right at Robinson at third. And he makes a good throw for the out. So to bring up Jim Bibby. Jim Bibby, a pretty good hitting pitcher. 
178 on the season with two home runs and five runs batted in, so definitely not an automatic out. But only hit 125 off of left-handed pitching. Now he delivers 1-2. Line Sharp in the right center field. Robinson cuts it off deep in the gap and Bibby will go for two. No, he decides to hold at one. So Bibby gets himself a base hit. So he's on with a one down. Brings up top of the order Marino. Marino struck out his first time up. Actually, no, he was retired 4-3. I thought he struck out. But he grounded out. Shot between first and second. Powell with a dive. And he'll go through for a single. So Bibby holds at second. So runners on first and second with one down. So tying run in scoring position. And no, we're not going to try it for third. So Phil Gardner up now. Gardner 0 for 1. RBI opportunity here for him. 1 2 pitch. Punch tied between first and second. Johnson up with it. Belanger second at one, back to first. And Gardner beats it out on a very close call. So they do get the middle runner. So runners at the corners now with two down. So Dave Parker. He is 0 for 1 on the day. And he'll swing away. Strikeout victim his last time. Here's the pitch. One Harper to Johnson. A hot potato. Stays with it. Throws over to retire the side. So Pittsburgh unable to score. And after three full, it's 3 nothing. As Mr. Brody has retired. Looks like he might have gone into the back room. We'll see if he returns or if Miss Mays comes on to co-host. So Frank Robinson hit a solo home run to put Baltimore on the board in the first, and that's where we are now, one nothing. Outfield way around to the left. Bibby looks in, 0-2 pitch. Swung on and missed. So Bibby gets him this time. And is one down in the Baltimore fourth. That'll be a Boog Powell. Powell for one. Struck out last time. Big breaking ball. Wiffle ball pitch. Powell strikes out. So he misses it. So two down now for Brooks Robinson. Three two pitch on the way. Robinson lines it up the middle and goes through for a single. So a two out single for Robinson. Dave Johnson up now, 0 for 1. Stargell holding Robinson on at first. Two balls and two strikes. Bibby works to Johnson. Johnson's tied up and down he goes. So that does it for the Orioles in the fourth. So we'll head to the bottom of the fourth with the Orioles 1 and the Pirates nothing. Robinson leads it off. He's one for one on the day. Singled his first time up. McNally on the rubber. 0-2 count. Deals. And it's a called strike three. So McNally with his first second K of the day. Gets Robinson. So to bring up Stargell. Stargell 0 for one. Popped up to Johnson his last time up. Mind in the pitch. Breaking ball. Belted along the right field line. It's gone if it stays fair. And it's gone. So Stargell ties the game with a solo home run of his own. As both Hall of Famers go yard. First Robinson and now Stargell. And it's a 1-1 game. So Pops ties the game. The coach up now. Kosha 0 for 1. Pittsburgh Pirate fans are still cheering. So count even at 2. McNally fires. Ground ball to the left side. Blanche can't get to it. And it bounces into left for, for a hit. 
And Akosha gets his first hit of the day. So that brings up Stennett. Infield pop up in the second. 3 2 pitch. Swung on a lift of the Buford in left field, measures it, and makes the grab for out number two. So let's see what Barra can do. He's 0 for 1 in the day. One strike pitch. Loop to short center. Blair moves in and takes it for out number three. But Pittsburgh ties it on the solo home run by Willie Stargell, and it's now a 1 1 game. So Hendricks leads it off for the Orioles. Air in the fifth. Single back in the second. 1 1 on Hendricks. Pitch to Hendricks on the ground right side. Stargell takes it in. He'll feed it to Bibby. One down. Mark Belanger up now. Payoff pitch. Line the other way into right field, but right at Parker, who'll make the catch for out number two. So two quick outs in the Oriole fifth. Brings up McNally, who struck out his first time up. 2-2 pitch. High fly ball to center. Marino drifts back, short of the warning track. Moves to, to the right and has it to end the inning. So halfway through, it's a 1-1 game. Bibby will lead it off. Singled his first time up. Single left McNally in the third. Nothing in two. Here it comes. Strike three swinging. On the old dipsy do. So that'll bring up Marino. Marino one for two. Payoff pitch to Marino. Breaking ball. Nearly bouncing in the strike zone. But Marino offers at it and goes down. So Gardner still looking for his first hit of the day. 1-1 one, one pitch. And it's going to be skied to left center field. Buford gives chase. And he won't be able to get to it. And Garner's going to try for two. Here's the throw. Garner slides. And he's safe. So Garner in there with a double. So the go-ahead run in scoring position now for Dave Parker. Parker struck out. And... Made another out. His last time. I can't remember exactly what it was. Bouncer over the mound. Over the middle. Just past the outstretched arm of Belanger. And a base hit. Phil no Gardner's run around third. And he'll score easily. So Dave Parker with an RBI single. Puts Pittsburgh up 2-1. to one. Much to the delight of Beatles Eternally. And Stratomatic Delaware. So check out Stratomatic Delaware's channel. He does a lot of retro... Um, sports games, a lot of strat games, as you can tell by his name. There's some strat baseball, some strat football, as, as well as some other s sports games. Great personality there, so check out his channel. Uh, let's see, so that brings up Bill Robinson with two down and Parker at first. One for two on the day is Robinson. Now he checks Parker at first. Here's the pitch to Robinson. And it's going to be a pitch out. Nothing doing. So Parker decides to hold it first. So it's a 1 0 count. McNally from the set position, 2 1 pitch. It's going to be down and in. And it get past Hendricks all the way to the backstop. And Parker moving to scoring position. So they're going to score that one a pass ball on Hendricks. So a base hit could add to the lead for the Pirates. See what Robinson can do now. 3-1 count. It's going to be a line drive. And Robinson will make the catch. Oh, actually, it's uh, Belanger that made the catch. Robinson's on the hit it. 
So the Pirates get a single run, and it's 2-1 to one after 5. So the Pirates with their first lead of the day. Bibby now staked to a one-run lead. See if he can get the Orioles in order here. Top of the order, Buford up now. 1-2 pitch. And he strikes him out. So Bibby now with 7 Ks on the day. So he's having a good day. In just five and a third innings. So Blair up now. Blair 0 for 2. Popped up last time up. Ball one offering here to the right side. And instead it makes a stop. And throws to Blair for the out. And throws Blair out, I should say. <laughs> so two outs in the top of the six. So he's one out away from getting... Getting them in order, but he'll have to face Frank Robinson, who homered off of him at the top of the first to give the Orioles a lead at the time. Struck out his last time up. 2-0 count. Bibby deals. Chopped wide a third. Gardner can't get it. And Barra cannot get it as he's screened by Gardner, and it'll go into left field for a single. So a two-out single for Robinson. Stargell holds him on. Powell up now. Powell 0 for 2 on the day. So he's been up twice and struck out twice. Two strike pitch. And he strikes out for a third time. So Bibby's had his number today as he strikes out Powell for the third time in his eighth strikeout of the day. So let's see if the Pirates can add to their lead here and give Bibby a little more cushion. Now he's also pitched a fine game. So Stargell will lead it off. Homer in his last time up. One ball, two strike pitch. Kicks and delivers. Long drive to right center field. Robinson chasing. Watching. Chasing. And he'll get there. So I gave that one a ride. Just a little short as it, it was hit 390 feet. But it hit the straightaway center field. So it just hit it to the wrong part of the ballpark there. I'll see what it had his second home run of the day. Instead, it's just a long out. So they're catching a kosher up now. He's one for two. Base hit back in the fourth. Behind at one, two. Now he comes home. He's going to pop it up to center. Blair's there to take it. And he's the second out. So two down now for Rennie Stennett. He's hitless on the day. There's the pitch. Chop it a third. It's going to be a tough play. Robinson backs up. Backhands it. Throws quickly. And gets him. So Vicks Robinson, the human vacuum cleaner, makes another great play. And that'll do it for the Pirates in the 6th. So it remains 2-1 Pittsburgh as we head to the 7th. Bibby back out there for his 8th inning. Bibby, I'm sorry, for his 7th inning of work. He's up to 86 pitches. 55 of them are strikes. So he's having a fine day as he hasn't outwalked a batter and has struck out 8. One strike pitch. Pitch on its way. Looping fly ball to right. Could be trouble. Parker's coming in fast. and it, But it falls in for a hit. So lead off runner is on. As Robinson gets himself a single. Bloop single. So Dave Johnson 0 for 2. Stargell holding him on. Struck out his last time up. Count even at 1. Here's the pitch. And Johnson gets jammed. Shoots the ball to right, but has himself a hit as it falls in there. Robinson will hold at second, so first two runners on for the Orioles. Runners on first and second as Nakosha goes out to talk to Bibby. Goes back behind the plate. Hendricks one for two on the day. Pirates hoping to turn two here. The bunt is going to be on. Popped up to short of the mound. Diving for it is Bibby. It pops out of his glove. Recovers, throws to third, and they get Robinson. Wow. So Robinson had to hesitate there as he thought the ball might have been caught. Uh, 
But Bibby alertly gets up and fires right to third to nail him. That's kind of a good thing he did miss. Works out well for Pittsburgh. So runners on first and second for Belanger. Belanger's 0 for 2 on the day. And they got him pinch hit with Terry Crowley. So Crowley comes in the pinch hit. Crowley, a 257 hitter. 294 on base percentage. Three, sorry, 394 on base percentage. So an excellent eye. Five homers and 20 runs batted in. So he had 35 walks in just 152 at bats. Well, actually, that would be 187 plate appearances. So he had 35 walks and 187 plate appearances. Three two pitch, hit off the end of the bat. Bear takes it in the air, in front of the bag at second. As Johnson gets back safely, so two outs now. So it'll be up to McNally. See if they go with him or they're going to pinch hit here. Let's see. Yeah, so McNally's day is done as Merv Rettman comes in. Rettman hit three twenty two with eighteen homers and fifty eight runs batted in. Maybe he needs to bear down now and get, keep to try to keep the lead. 2-2 two -two pitch. Smoke to second. Off Stennis chest. Recovers. Fires to first. Close play. And Rettman just beats the throw. Ugh. So going to give him an infield single that one. So that's going to load the bases for Don Buford, who's hitless on the day 0 for 3. As Chuck Tanner comes out to talk to Bibby decides to keep it in, jogs back to the dugout. So here's the delivery to Buford. Base is loaded, two down. Three balls and a strike. Here's the pitch. And it's going to be ball four as he walks in the tying run. So Bibby not happy with himself there. He thought that was a strike. So we have a new ball game now, two to two. So Paul Blair up now. Blair 0 for 3 on the day. 3-2 pitch. There you go, the runners. Foul ball. So 3-2 count still. Fouled off at the plate, so Blair holding tough here. Ah, oh, Blair lays off of that one. And that's going to be another RBI as Blair fights off a couple of tough pitches and draws the walk. So Baltimore takes the lead here. So Tanner isn't going to let Bibby face Robinson, so he'll come out of the game. So unfortunately, it's Bibby's game to lose, and he cannot win it now. He's pitched a fine game up until this inning, but that's going to be it. Let's see here. So we're going to make a replacement here. So let's see. And who do we got coming up here? Well, Frank Robinson, that's right. So we definitely want to get a righty in here. Um, hmm, we could bring in some starters here too. I think we're going to bring in Enrique Romo. So Bibby's day is done. Okay. All right. So Jim B uh, Bibby's day is done. Enrique Romo comes in. 299 ERA with a 10 and 5 record, 5 saves, 129 innings and 3rd innings pitched, 122 hits allowed, 11 homers, 43 walks, and 106 strikeouts. And righties hit 240 against him. So Robinson with a chance here to break the game wide open. Here's the kick and delivery by Romo.
Here it is. Now he steps off the mound. He's ready to go again. 0-1 count. Romo works to Robinson. Robinson is hit. Oh, man. So two walks and a hit batsman. We'll drive home a third run now. As Pittsburgh, as Pittsburgh faithful are not happy with that. 4-2 to two now. So it brings up left-handed hitting Boo Powell. So he struck out three times. 2-0 pitch, slow ground ball to the left side. Gardner goes to second. And that'll do it. But Baltimore scores three runs to take a 4-2 lead via two walks and a hit batsman. And now Pittsburgh finds themselves in a deficit now, 4-2. Barrow will lead it off. 0-2 on the day. All right, now we're going to check this here because let's see what our splits are here. Because I think Tavares... Okay, Tavares is not good against the lefties. It's another lefty here, so we are just gonna leave Bear in here. Because Barrow not great, but he's better than Tavares is against the lefties. Not much, but here we go. So Lopez in the pitch now. 208 with a 1 1 record. And 47 uh 60 innings pitched. And Bear is going to be thrown out. 4-3. Grounds to second. And Robo is going to be lifted for a pinch hitter. And as you can see, my lineup is not that good. Although, we do have some pinch hitters here. So let's see here. Get a lefty in there now. Oh, Holy Lacey only 190 against righty, surprisingly. Oh, wait a second, though. No. Hold on. The other, guy's, the other guy's a lefty, though, right? Yeah, he's a lefty. So we're going to bring in Holy Lacey against a lefty. Let's see if they counter here. Okay, here we go. Pitch to Lacey. Breaking ball. Got the bat on it. Not much of it, though. And Salmon to Peril. So we have Salmon now in at shortstop for Belanger. And Powell in. Well, Powell's still there. So that's going to be out number two. So Omar Marino on now. Up now, he's one for three on the day. Struck out by Nally back in the fifth. Pitch on the way, ground ball. Johnson in his right, under his glove. So it's going to be a base hit for Marino. <sighs> I think we're going to try a try to get steal a run, even though we're down by two. It's only the seventh. See if we can get one of those runs back. So let's try for a steal here. So here we go. See if we can get the lead. Lopez to the stretch. Here's the delivery. Marino breaks for second. Pitches a ball. Hendricks throws. Marino slides. And he's... Ah! Gets thrown out. So that'll do it for the Pirates in the seventh. So Brooks Robinson will lead it off. And we're going to need a new pitcher here. Hmm. Keeson did have eight. Appearances out of the pen, so I think we're going to bring in Bruce Keys in here. I 
Uh, maybe not. I think we might want to have him pitch next. So we'll go with. Let's go with Don Robinson. We're probably not going to have him start anyway. So we'll use him out of the pen. All right. So Don Robinson comes in for the Pirates. 8-8 eight eight record with 3.87 ERA, 160 and two-thirds innings pitched, 171 hits allowed, 12 homers, 52 walks, and 96 strikeouts. 268 against righties and 286 against lefties. So Brooks Robinson up now. He's two for three on the day. So another Robinson in the game. 3-2 pitch. Strikes him out. So Robinson gets Robinson. So one down now for Dave Johnson. One for three on the day. Also scored a run. Lifted way up to left. Robinson, shy of the warning track. We'll take it in for out number two. So that brings up Hendricks, who's one for three. Run scored also. Two balls, two strikes, kicks and fires. Shot down the right side, Stennett to his left. Has it, 10 the inning. So on the line, Stennett catches the liner. And the Orioles go in order. So Pittsburgh down by two, comes up in the bottom of the eighth. Fans trying to rally them. As Gardner leads it off. Gardner one for three with a run scored. Payoff pitch to Gardner, and he belts it into the right field gap and down. Around second, down the stretch he comes, headlong dive, and he's in there with a triple. So Gardner with a hustle triple there. I can just see that one. I remember him doing it with his, his head for a slides. And Gardner with a leadoff triple. So the tying run will come up now with Dave Parker. Parker one for three on the day, has an RBI. Chance for his, at least his second here. Possibly more if he can hit one out. Lopez gets the sign. Two and nothing in Parker. Lopez pitches to Parker, jams him. It's going to be a pop up the short, and Sam will call it for the out. So one down now as Parker gets jammed. So Bill Robinson up now, another Robinson. He's one for three on the day. Power. Robinson has some power too. He could hit one out. So it looks like they're going to concede the run here. Swung and ripped to right center. Gardner trots home from third. As Robinson gets on with a base hit. So an RBI single for Bill Robinson. And it's now a 4-3 game. So that'll bring up Pops, Willie Stargell. He already has a home run today. One for three. Pittsburgh fans would love to see another one here and to put the Pirates ahead. Stands in. Lopez from the high set. 1-1 one, one pitch. Pitch on the way. Popped up to the left side. Salmon goes back and back a short. Waves Buford out of the way and puts it away for out number two. So it'll be up to Nakosha if the inning has to continue. One for three of the day. Lopez comes to a set. 1-1 one, one pitch. Fastball elevated to right center. Blair moves over. And pulls it in for out number three. But they do get one in after the leadoff triple by Phil Gardner. He comes in the score. And it's now a 4-3 game. So a 1-1 one -one ball game as Robinson goes out there for his second inning of relief. Hoping to keep it a 1-1 one -one ball game. He'll face May, Salmon, and Buford. Gardner backhands the, behind the bag, throws across, and they'll get him on the grounder. So Chico Salmon getting his first at bat of the day. Hit 250 with seven homers and 22 runs batted in. Robinson looks in, 1 2 on Salmon, comes home, and strikes him out swinging with the breaking ball.
So I bring up top of the order, Buford. He's 0 for 3 on the day. Has walked once and has an RBI. and Had a bases loaded walk back in the 7th. Buford walk with the bases loaded. Yeah, 2-0 pitch. Swung on a line to center field. Reno closes the ground on it, but it falls in for a hit. So two out single for Buford. Blair up now. Blair 0 for 3 also on the day, but does also has a walk and an RBI. As he had a bases loaded walk. I think it was either a walk or he uh I think it was the walk. But Blair strikes out this time, which is more important. And that'll do it for the Orioles in the top of the ninth. So Pittsburgh down by a run. They'll have Stennett, Bear, and Robinson. That Robinson, the pitcher, bottom third of the order up. So not exactly where Pittsburgh wants it, but they'll have to go with it. Let's see if we can get somebody else. Let's see, as Watt is in now. So Eddie Watt in. He's the closer. 7-7 seven and seven record with 3.25 ERA. 55 innings pitched, 44 hits allowed, 3 home runs he's surrendered. 29 walks and 33 strikeouts. Opponents hitting 239 off of him. So let's check. Sten at 234. Let's see if we can can bear a bunt if he gets on. I don't think so. He's an average bunter, so he could, I guess. All right, so let's uh let's look and see what we got here available on our bench. Possibly Ed Ott, maybe? Ed Ott, 276 hitter against righties. Milner, 291. All right, we'll worry about defense later. So, yeah, we're going to bring in Milner to pinch hit. Or stun it. All right, so John Milner comes in, 276 hitter on the season. 16 homers and 60 runs bad in, so he could tie it up with one swing of the bat. Hit 291 versus righties. So Watt looks into the sign from Hendricks. Here's the windup in the pitch. 0-1 delivery. Smash to first. Powell has it on two hops. And he'll hit Watt covering for the out. So Dale Bear up now. Hmm. Let's see. Tavares could play short, but Tavares two ninety actually two ninety six against righties. I think we're gonna bring in Tavares. Fortunately his on base percentage is the same as his Average, so he does not walk at all. Eastler, maybe? 255, 321 on base percentage. And Alexander. Oh. Then we have 13 at bats on the season. He is in the lineup, though, so I'm going to use him. I'm going to use him. He is in the lineup. If this were like a career, a season replay, then maybe not. But in this uh, type of setup, I'm definitely going to take advantage of this. Especially since we get screwed by not having Foley or Parker in the lineup. So, all right. So, Alexander comes in. Get 530 on this actual season. Only 13 at-bats with an RBI. 400 against righties. 625 against the lefties. So, see what he can do here. That was the rubber, 3-1 pitch. Hit on the ground the short. And Salmon, not the easiest pop to play, plays it. And Alexander's out at first. So Pirates are down to the last out now. Don Robinson, 204 a hitter, but. Alright, so down to the last out here. Ooh, Saint Guillen, 360 versus righties. Heck yeah, we're gonna bring him in. (laughs) 
So Manny Sanguian comes in, 230 on the season, but again, he hit 360 versus righty. So we're going to the last out for the Pirates here. See if they can extend the inning. He's going to have to reach. Watt closes it on the ground ball to short. Salmon completing the play to first, and Baltimore will get the win. So the pirate and the pirates fall to the Orioles four to three as Baltimore hangs on. So a bad seventh inning with two straight bases loaded walks and a hip batsman propels the Baltimore Orioles to a four to three win over the Pittsburgh Pirates to much the dismay of the Pittsburgh fans. No errors on the day, so that was good. So let's take a look at our box score. So McNally gets the win for Baltimore, 1-0. Six innings pitched, seven hits allowed, two runs, both of them earned, four strikeouts, 92 pitches, 67 strikes. Lopez gets the hold and pitches two innings, a three-hit ball, allowing one run. And Watt gets the save, one inning. Retiring the side in order. For Pittsburgh, Jim Bibby gets the tough luck loss. Well, not really tough luck, but gets the loss. He's 0-1. Six and two-thirds innings pitch. Seven hits allowed. Four runs. Four earned. Two walks and eight strikeouts. So he pitched a pretty good game up until the seventh inning. Just ran out of gas in the seventh. Romo pitched a third of an inning. And Robinson, two innings in relief, allowing just one hit with three strikeouts. So Robinson pitched fine coming in relief. For the Baltimore Orioles, Don Buford, one for four with an RBI. Paul Blair, 0 for four with a run batted in. Frank Robinson, two for three with a solo home run and two RBIs. Uh, let's see, Lopez, the pitcher. Did not get an official at bat. Watt did not get an official at bat. Powell, 0 for 4. Bill uh, Brooks Robinson, 2 for 4. Davy Johnson, 1 for 4 with a run scored. Hendricks, 1 for 4 with a run scored. Belanger, 0 for 2. Crowley, 0 for, 2 as a pinch, 0 for 1 as a pinch hitter. May, 0 for 1. Came on the play right field. Um, McNally, 0 for 2. Retmond, one for one with a run scored. Salmon, 0 for one. For the Pittsburgh Pirates, Omar Marino is two for four. Gardner, two for four with a couple of runs scored. Had a triple. Um, Dave Parker, one for four with an RBI. Bill Robinson, two for four with an RBI. Stargell was one for four with a solo home run. Nikosha 1 for 4. Stennett was 0 for 3. Milner's a pinch hitter 0 for 1. Barra also 0 for 3. So see Stennett and Barra, two guys which I really didn't want to play. If I would have had uh, Madlock and um, Foley, I definitely would have replaced them. So I think that would have definitely given Pittsburgh a much better chance there. So they're going to kind of play this game under protest. Uh, Alexander... 0 for 1 is a pinch hitter. Bibby, 1 for 2. Romo did not get in that bat as in relief. Uh, Lee Lacey, 1, 0 for 1. Robinson, 0, did not get an official at bat, the pitcher. Um, and Manny Sanguian, 0 for 1. So that's it. That's the 1979 Pittsburgh Pirates fall to the 1970 Boston Baltimore Orioles by a score of 4 to 3. Fueled by a bases loaded, two walk, two bases loaded walks, and a hit batsman with the bases loaded. So that's it. So thank you for joining us. It's been Eric from Higher Ground Gaming, and we'll take let you guys take a look at the. Uh, actually, yeah, we'll take a look at the uh, score sheet here. So there's your score sheet. And here's your game log. And 
we'll go back to the main board here. So save the game stats. Exit the game. So, all right. So, after today's games, there are your standings as in Division Three here. Baltimore and Chicago tied for first. So, let's take a look at the remaining games. So, if you see any remaining games here you like, otherwise, I'm just going to pick one. We've played two from each division now. So, any game is up for grabs here. So, if there's something you want to see, let me know and I'll play that one next. You play the possibly the Dodgers, 74 Dodgers against 46 St. Louis. That's something different. 33 Washington against 49 Brooklyn. That could be interesting. Nineteen nineteen Cincinnati. Let's see if they can win in World Series. Well, they did win the World Series. Let's see if they can win one legitimately. A game legitimately. Uh, 95 Cleveland. That could be good too. That might be the one. I just played Cincinnati though. So, All right. So if there's anything here you want to see, let me know. Otherwise, I'm just going to pick a game. And uh, thank you for joining me. And we'll see you in the next ELO Greatest Teams Tournament. So take care and God bless. Bye-bye now.